right, folks. It's been a while. Uh, this is a brand new Cinema Lounge where we sit back, relax, and warm up before the main podcast. And uh, we haven't played this in a while. It's been like at least a couple of months. So we're going to play the game known as Pitch This, Welcome to Hollywood, or as I like to call it now, The Pitch Master. Are you the master of pitches? Can you pitch a good Hollywood movie? Let's find out. Uh, it is like Cards Against Humanity if you've not seen us play it. Uh, we played this a couple of times. We played it drunk, and we played it, uh, like I said, a couple of months ago with uh, Cody, Andy, and Sam. So this time around, it's just going to be the three of us. Uh, so two of us will pitch against one person. He will have to decide between the two pitches, and it's just, like I said, Cards Against Humanity, where the card goes to the person as a point. So... The first genre is lovely because it's a musical. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. So let me hand out the cards for all of, for the two, which I'm going to be the uh, the executive. So you two are going to pitch for me first. So I'm going to pitch two <laughs> cards. For both. I got a great musical for you. <laughs> Weinstein, The Untold Story. <laughs> Go with that. What's this one? Okay. Okay. All right. And we just need. <laughs> okay. This could work. This could work. All right. Hold on. Let me pull up. This got ripped. I ripped that one. That's ripped. So that's forever going to be ripped. Yeah. Okay, so we got our contributions. Yes, so whenever you guys are ready to pitch your movie of an upcoming musical, uh, we, need new, we need a new musical. Something fresh and original. Hmm. So whoever is ready can go first. <laughs> well, mine pretty much writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go first, Cody? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I think I got it. I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Damn it. Okay. All right. Coming soon to the DC Cinematic Universe, in the ruins of the planet of Krypton, a spaceship lies crashed in disrepair. But a scout ship, (laughs) led by Captain Picard of the USS Enterprise, comes aboard, and in order to soothe the savage beast that lies within, he sings him a loving song. Tis a movie of sacrifice, betrayal, a space opera for the ages. From the creators of Repo the Genetic Opera, we bring you (laughs) Songs of Krypton. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and so that's that's his contribution. I guess it's my turn. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if DC actually tried a movie like that. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Okay. Ah, From the makers of Set in Current Day. This scene, Miami, probably Vice. We may or may not uh, go in that crossover direction eventually in the future, but this is a casting choice for the ages. Will Smith, in his Oscar-winning role as Pocahontas, 
transported out of the past to cur to current day by by a willow tree that speaks apparently uh the famed pocahontas of of american legend uh arrives in modern day chasing after an intergalactic uh um an intergalactic john smith uh also uh time traveling and played by kurt russell <laughs> although when they end up in current day uh, they both uh they both transfigurate magically and uh, Pocahontas is transformed into Will Smith. And from here on out, it becomes a rap musical. Uh, for, her, uh, for her in the body of a man to pursue, uh, to pursue, pursue the love of her life uh, in the body of Kurt Russell. That's our movie. I'm now picturing Will Smith dressed up in the Pocahontas costume, going to see the Disney version and just yelling his ass, That ain't right! No, that's not how it happened! No, oh, we all know that's not how it happened. Oh, dear God. If it happened. <laughs> that's... Damn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, got a potential t you got a potential title for that? Or just Pocahontas? Pocahontas, the rap musical. <laughs> Damn it, James. James gets the point. I was going to say, no contest. No. No, contest. no fucking contest there. <laughs> All right, James gets the, the first point. Uh, Good game, Cody. <laughs> that's okay, because he gets to be executive, and Cody and I get to pitch. Oh, the genre is crime. Crime. Mm-hmm. Crime. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, okay, that could work. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you did this again. I'm sorry. Crime movie. A, a crime movie somehow. So, uh, are you pulling the comment? The are you pulling the choices for me now? I take it. No, 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 no. It is two against one, so you get to decide between us. Uh, I get to decide. Oh, I'm. Yeah, I'm you, the we, one. We switch around. You said. I thought you said, I thought you said Cody was next. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was between Cody and I pitching against one another to pitch to James, in particular. Thank you, Mike. What hell hast thou wrought what for oneself? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh lordy, lordy, lordy. Uh, mm. <laughs> the, the, fact, the fact that everything that you tell me is owned by Warner Brothers, you know, that's just. I know, that's what I said. It came out of nowhere. I was like, wait, how did that come up again? So yes, Warner Brothers, again for you. Um... <laughs> I, however, have a Disney property. Properties. Oh, you win. You win. You win. <laughs> Disney kicks Warner Brothers ass. Just the way I'm going to pitch it, that's the thing. I'm going to think about it. How am I going to... Okay. Uh... Okay. Um, I think I got it. 
Okay, you go ahead then. <laughs> okay. Taking place in the Star Wars universe on planet Hoth, we see a lone survivor, Rocky Raccoon, searching for the killer of his best friend Groot. He suspects it's someone within the Star Wars universe. He finds a fellow female detective to help him out on this intergalactic adventure trying to solve the crime. Played by Uma Thurman. Probably playing similar character to Beatrice Kiddo from Kill Bill. She has a samurai sword and she's ready to slice and dice and solve the crime of Rocket's friend Groot dying. Title, potential title would be Groot's not dead. No one kills baby Groot. <laughs> That's the real title you should be going for. <laughs> baby Groot kills you. <laughs> All right. One pitch. Cody, come at me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. Alright, alright. Taking place within the hollowed halls of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft or Wizardry, while, while some young wizards have done research into the forbidden dark arts, they come across an unknown item that has been missing for years. The One Ring of Power. <laughs> but... <coughs> But, as they go to find that the ring is hidden somewhere in the school, when they finally find it, for some reason, the entire student body is massacred, and the ring missing. With little to no help, they call upon the stars to summon the Man of Steel himself to help them figure out who did this and why. Along with his sidekick, Frodo Baggins, played again by Elijah Wood, they team up together in order to solve the case. Title coming soon. <laughs> Title still pending, waiting for approval by executive. By executives. <laughs> Catherine Kennedy, or whatever her name is. <laughs> um. Well, first off, I'd like to say you're both terrible at pitching crime. Dramas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Clearly, you're in the wrong. You're you're out of your element here. More into the fantasy realm, which is my kind of thing. <laughs> but if I have to pick between the two of them, let's be honest. Um. Uh, Hogwarts never really cared much about the security of their students to begin with. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to go with with Cody's idea. <laughs> they probably yeah, they probably killed everyone off as a tax write off. <laughs> What's our genre again? Romantic comedy. Rom com, as people say. Hey. So, it doesn't matter. You can sort of incorporate any way you want to. It doesn't have to be with each other, but it has to involve it in the movie somehow. Romantic comedies. Hold on. I'm trying to think of... Trying to think of how your Zell goes together. Yeah.
Well, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Shush. I'm just trying to... I think I got it. 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 For the fourth movie in the franchise. In the Star Trek universe, D director Spike Jones is coming in to direct the next installment. Uh, the director you may know as for her, as well as the world where the wild things are. Um, we have and being John Malkovich. Yes, same guy. He's going to come in and give us a romantic comedy set in the Star Trek universe, but with a little twist. We're going to have Khan, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, coming back from Star Trek Into Darkness. And we have oh right, he's not dead. He's yeah. That's the, that's the big twist. Is he's not dead. Um, and uh, Spock, um, somehow uh, Spock totally uh, falls for Khan. Maybe maybe Khan is eluding him under a spell to make him love him. Maybe <laughs> it's gen and maybe it's like actual love because Ahura is like like crazy like. Spock, what are you doing? He's the enemy. Don't fall in love with him. It's full of betrayal, love, adventure, and lots of space trekking through the universe. It is Star Trek beyond love. Depends. Uh, is Zachary Quinto up for kissing? Uh... <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. It, it, who knows? It could. We can definitely strike that deal up with <laughs> with them. Okay. And on my end of things, imagine this. I love sick, hungry. I love sick uh, and hungry. Owen Wilson, playing the role of an intrepid reporter living in Gotham City. Uh, with all the crime dramas uh, and stories and everything that, uh, uh, that have gone on, uh, Wilson's character, we'll call, uh, we'll call him James McMillian, or even better, Miles McMillian, intrepid reporter, uh, is still is still busy getting over the passing uh, of his beloved Marley. That he strikes up another relationship with a uh, with a, a current story on the after hitting up uh, a, a current story on the new family that's been that's moved into Gotham City, that is. That is uh, stirring up quite a lot of interest due to one of their uh, main family members. It's the little family moving moving in from New York, and they're inter and he's interviewed their son Stuart. And yes, love blossoms in that in that tiny little pocket of Owen Wilson's heart uh, that was left beh behind by Marley for Stuart Little. We call it All is Fair in Love and Gotham. Also, before you decide, I forgot to mention that uh, this Star Trek romantic comedy is going to be set in the Himalaya Mountains because they crash land in the Himalaya Mountains on Earth. It's kind of like Star Trek means, meets the mountain between us. Ah, uh -uh. right. Okay. Well, gentlemen. 
you pitched some mighty good ideas. But I am sad to say, I'm going to pick over one because the other sounds like about 20 fan fictions released online. James, take our money and make the movie. What? <laughs> I got two points. You just got two points. I will do one more round and we'll see if James gets another point because I'm going to be the executive this time. <clears throat> So, the setting for the third round is usually played in three rounds. Yeah. Ranking. Yeah. War. A war film. Oh boy. A war film. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> War films? War. <laughs> Alright, so we're pitching you this time, right? Yes, we're, you're pitching to me, and this is going to be the deciding factor if Cody gets a point or if you win with three points. So. <laughs> Okie doke. Uh... And our genre is what war. now? War. War. A war film. Oh, well, this is prepped and ready for that. Mm -hmm. uh... Never whoever's ready first. Think of, think of anything to pitch it. To try to sell it to make into a potential feature. I gotta think about this. Yes. Like I said, you can involve it anyway. Um, the actor or actress does not have to play the character. The character can play alongside the actor actress. But if you want to have them play the character, that's fine. Makes it more uh, thrilling for the pitch. Um, Think of the setting. Maybe we should include other characters that the the two could meet. Uh, and think about the genre. And think how you would evolve the genre with these three things. Okay. Okay. I think I have it. Mm. Anything? Yeah. Yes. I'm ready. <laughs> Set in the years of yore in the castle lands of Camelot, King Arthur has just died, leaving Excalibur open to whoever can take it. With Queen Guinevere, played by Sandra Bullock, comes back from her illustrious affair in the woods with Sir Lancelot to come and defend the mighty sword from the evil army led by one Eric Cartman and his army of man-bear pigs. Coming <laughs> soon to theaters near you. Respect her majesty! <laughs> okay, that's actually a pretty good pitch. <laughs> I don't know how I can top that. Um, but I'll try. Okay, so here's a here's an here's an easy uh, titling scheme for you. Um, we have uh, so we're going to make a third. Alice in Wonderland movie, but here's a twist. Uh, because it's the third movie in the series, and we're going by Rambo logic, we're dropping the previous the uh, we're dropping the uh, uh, the first part of the title out altogether. So we're just going to call this Wonderland Three. Okay, it's in, it's especially important because Alice is not going to be in this movie. 
it's mainly just focusing on the on the world of Wonderland and the residents within without Alice's presence. And in Wonderland, um, uh, all all has uh, has reigned peacefully. And the many years since the Red Queen has uh, has given up her uh, uh, as has given up her war against her sister, but uh, there is a, another contender that has come in. Uh, time as so time as so uh, notoriously played by Sasha Baron Cohen in the previous film has a younger sister, Rhyme. Named, uh, played by Emma Watson, uh, who is envious of his of his power over the events of everything, and decides, and decides to use his uh, uh, his powers against him to rewrite the entire history of uh, of Wonderland using uh, uh, using wording. As their she, as their, uh, as as her weapon, wars are bat are fought in this film, but they are not fought with cannons, particularly. They are not fought with guns, they are fought with constant, constant rhyming. Yes, and it's work and it works perfectly because if you ever read Alice in Wonderland, there's rhymes everywhere, there's rhymes everywhere. So why not just use that as a weapon? Galvanize that trait, and the only one that can save us, the only one that can save us against Rhyme's uh, uh, lack of reasoning, shall we say, is Cinderella from the neighboring kingdom. On her flying in on her magic carpet. Ah. Okay. <laughs> she rains, and she rains down on Emma Watson. With with mighty glass slippers, and smashes it over her head. <laughs> and that's that's our climactic beginning. The only way that you can destroy rhyme is with a glass slipper. Because nothing rhymes with a glass slipper. How about a fat ass flipper? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing rational rhymes with with it. But then again, this is Wonderland. <laughs> so Damn. that's my pitch for Wonderland three. Damn. There's no contest there. There's no contest. <laughs> There's no contest there. James gets the point. <laughs> He's the ultimate. Yay! He's the ultimate pitch master. He can pitch a movie, folks. <laughs> Please tell okay. me. <laughs> okay, if we're gonna make this movie loud, we gotta change a few things. Okay, first of all, Cinderella has to lose two ribs in order to fit into her tight ass dress. Uh, we gotta have a cameo from every other Disney princess, and the glass slipper has to be changed to an orange because that makes more sense. Nothing rhymes with orange, dear. It's gonna be fabulous. Fabulous. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Rhyme rhymes with rhyme. <laughs> That's good. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next in the podcast where we're talking about movie villains. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs>